I'd like to turn to is detecting senescent cells in, in vivo particularly. So can you talk a little bit about why is that so difficult? There are very few of them. And this is something that um, stymied the field for many years. So if you look in a very old tissue, even a very diseased tissue and count the number of senescent cells in that tissue, it's higher than in a young tissue or a non-diseased tissue, but it's still remarkably small percentage, a few percent at the most, very, very few senescent cells. So how do you detect such a small number of senescent cells? And so this is a big push now to develop what we call biomarkers of senescence. And there are many labs working on it. We actually have a grant from the National Institutes on Health to try to develop better biomarkers so we can detect these cells in vivo, either in blood or urine. Um, and the work is progressing, but it, it's, it's been tough. So right now, the only way is to take a biopsy and count. Mm. And, you know, if it's blood or urine or even skin, no problem. But if it's your brain, you're not going to want anybody biopsying your brain. <laughs> there are many other organs you don't want to biopsy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So at the moment, so you, you developed a, a new, you, well, you wrote a paper about a new way of detecting using, um, so non-invasive and so looking at the blood, I believe. So yeah. can you talk about why that's different? Yes. So that was not a marker to detect the cells. It was a marker to detect the killing of senescent mm -hmm. cells. It was a biomarker for being able to more quickly assess whether a senolytic was active or not. And what the biomarker is, this was like many things in most labs, including my lab, uh, we stumbled upon it. By, by accident, um, but it's a lipid. It's a small fatty molecule that accumulates inside senescent cells. And when they die, they release it. And they release it into the blood and the urine. And it turns out that you can detect this lipid um, in the blood and in the urine with a very sensitive biochemical assay. And so it enables you to know whether a senolytic is really killing senescent cells or not. You can show it in culture, but you want to know if it works in vivo. That is, if you give a patient a senolytic drug, how do you know it's really killing senescent cells? And we think we're optimistic that this biomarker will enable companies who are developing senolytics to have a faster way of knowing if their compound is working or not. They don't have to wait five years to see if the pathology is getting better. And so that's the hope. Um, and we'll see how applicable, it certainly works in mice. And of course there are people who are now testing it in humans. Okay, so you would see it as, as being essentially uh, like something that would be run in the lab. It's not something that would be commercially available. Well, it will probably be used by companies who are developing senolytic drugs. So it's a useful tool, but yes, it's not something you would want, unless of course you believe, if you believe that eating blueberries was killing senescent cells, you may want to buy this test and test yourself and see if urine shows this, this lipid in your urine. Right. So, so do you think you would be able to kind of work backwards from, so, I mean, if there's more senescent cells, then you have more senescent cells to kill. And so the higher level may imply that the sen senolytic is working better, but it may also imply that there were more senescent cells. And so you could kind of use it as a way of detecting at yes. least how many senescent cells there was at the beginning. Yes, actually that's a very good point. One of the things we recently found is that if you look at the baseline of this lipid, meaning no senolytic, you just look at young, and old mice. It's actually higher in old mice for just the reason that you said they probably have more senescent cells and you know, either the immune system or other mechanisms are slowly killing them, not enough, 
but still, and so the level of this marker goes up. So it could also be used to assess the burden of PMC cells in elderly people. Right, yeah, so once you had it kind of calibrated, then, then that may be a way of looking at that. Mm -hmm.